if you would turn with me to Matthew 16, 13. And um, we're going to talk there. And uh, the name of this teaching is going to be, Why Go to Church? Why do we go to church? And first of all, I want to, you know, just go through, because I know basically I'm preaching to the choir here, but who is the church? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, see, we are the church. And what is the church? The church is the believers, the called out ones. And what have we been called out of? We've been called out of everything that the world is. Glory to God. Glory to God. I mean, what we've been called into, the goodness of God, the light of God, the provision of God, the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God. I mean, the love of God. We could just go on and on. Amen. But it's so nice to know that we've been called the the ones that are called out. So we're not the building. We're not the building. So if I ask all of you guys to exit the building, this nice, beautiful sanctuary, your cushy seats, the nice, wonderful air conditioning, right? If I ask you to go and sit out up underneath the tree, and I came over and I gave you my teaching, we would still be the church. Amen? So if we all loaded up and we had a big van, and we loaded up and we went to Walmart, here comes the church. Here comes the church. See, and that's, that's how it is with you whenever you go wherever you're going. The church is moving forward. And in Ephesians 4, it tells us that, you know, we as the leadership of the church, God brings up those people. You know, my job is to bring you forward, to gather you, provide a place, and to encourage you to teach and instruct, and then to send you out. Hallelujah. Because God is wanting to use the church. I mean, can we understand church? Can we understand how important... Do you understand how important you are? See, the enemy wants you to think just the the opposite of that. But see, now this is a word from the Lord here today. You know, you have thought of yourself as so least and so small. But great and mighty is I am that is in you. Because I am in you and I am with you and I am for you. And I choose to go with you. But I choose for you to choose to allow me to speak forth the things of my word. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, the Lord is wanting to use you out on your job, with your neighbor, wherever you go. You guys go places. You see people. You talk to people all the time. But are we opening our mouth as the church to say, this is who I am? Is there some place I can, is there something I can do for you? Ma'am, can I help you? Or can I get the door for you? I mean, I get the door for guys. They look at me very odd. I say, you know, especially a little older gentleman, you know. I say, hey, sir, let me get that for you. What? I'm like, go ahead, go ahead. And they look at, thank you. It's like, God bless you. I gave me perfect opportunity. You know, so there's always something we can do, right? There's always something we can do. And so, well, I've given you guys time to get to Matthew, right? All right, Matthew 16. And you know, Jesus was talking to them prior to, and he was talking to the Pharisees and the scribes, and he said, you know, you can tell what time, you know, how, if it's going to be a, um, you know, if it's going to be a storm or something. But he says um, in verse 3, he said, but you cannot discern the signs of the time. And so then as we start here in verse 13, now this is, Jesus, uh, this is Peter's confession of Jesus. And 13, it says, Now when we came unto the district of Caesarea Philippi, he said to his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, but still others say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And look what he says. He says, But who do you say I am? See, that's very important. And just knowing the basis of the church, we as the church need to know who Jesus is. Amen? We truly do need to know who Jesus is. You know, I, you know <laughs> Joyce Myers used to say that. It used to tickle me. She said, you can sit in the garage all day long, but it doesn't make you a car. 
you know? And um, I, I used to just laugh at that, and I thought that's so true. But there's so many people that come to church, you know, because they want to feel good, they're guilty or, or whatever, or it's a ritual. We shouldn't come to church because it's a ritual, because we feel guilty. We should come to church because Jesus has the answers. Amen. 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 And then in verse 16, Simon Peter answers and says, now here's Peter's, the wonderful revelation that the Father gives him. He says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. See, Jesus was wanting him to understand that Peter... This is not something you came up with. This didn't come from your mind, your soulless room, or any part of good with you. This is coming to you as a revelation from the Father. And then Jesus goes on and he says, And I say unto you that you are Peter. Now we want to understand that who we're talking to, Jesus was declaring who he was speaking to, Peter. Now Jesus is. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so one of the things here that I want us to understand is that Peter is not the rock. Peter was the one the revelation was given. Jesus Christ was our rock and is our rock and will forever be the rock. Amen. And so the church is built upon Jesus. And so what Jesus was saying to Peter was that, Peter, from this revelation that my Father has given to you, now upon this revelation I will build my church. So see, when the church first comes in, we need to understand the revelation. And what is that revelation? Well, Peter declared it. He says, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen? Because we need to make sure that we're involved in a church that first and foremost believes in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? There's a trinity. And the trinity was in the beginning, he was in the middle, and he's at the end, and he's going to be for all eternity. Because they're one, they're one, but yet they're in three. I know that's hard for our minds to wrap around, but they all have different, the, the, they, they do different things, but they are individuals. I mean, you know, it's just so wonderful the things that God has done, and he brings it so simplistic here in the, in the Word of God. Now, if you would turn to Acts 2. Acts 2. We practiced amen this morning, didn't we? So let me hear an amen. Oh, that's good. God loves, God loves that. He loves you to say yes and amen. Acts 2.42, it says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. And I just want to stop right there. So, I know we read these scriptures, and we read them through, and sometimes we quote them. Maybe we've not taken time to read this one. But this one here is telling us that why we are to come together. We, it says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. And what is the apostles' teaching? The apostles' teaching was the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what it always was, and that's what it always will be. That's what we talk about here at Living Grace. It's something that we need to make sure that we understand that the truth of what we build our doctrine on is the truth of Jesus Christ. The the disciples declared and decreed the gospel of what Jesus did. It was their talk. It was their declaration. It was their testimonies of what they saw, what they heard, what Jesus declared and decreed. Man, can you just imagine uh, being in the first church? It was so awesome. Guys, let me tell you, we think we have it bad today. (laughs) And I tell you, there was a lot of stuff going on during the first church. I mean, in the Roman times, and I talked some last time in my last series about the fact of when, why did God have Jesus to be born in when the Roman community was right there just pounding down on everyone? It didn't matter who you were. And so, but we see that God always, 
He's always right in the middle of what's going on. He's right in the middle of what's going on in your life. So don't think it's, you know, oh, but pastor, you just don't know. I get it. I do. But God's there. Amen. Okay, so Acts 2, 42, it says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and of prayers. And that's a corporate. That's, that's coming together as a corporate. Now, I'm going to read it in also in the in NLT, the translation, also the Amplified says this. It says, All believe, believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the sharing of meals, and this included the Lord's Supper. So that's communion. So we see that even at the very beginning that the church came together and they ate, they had fellowship. Why? Because you've got a community of believers with such an oppression of the Roman, of the Romans, um, you know, just, I mean, it was, it's horrible to think, I mean, I've studied a lot of that out and it's horrible what they did and how they did it and to whom they did it. There was nothing good about it. There was nothing fair about it. But see, right where we live, we may think, well, there's a lot going on today. Is there a lot going on today, church? There is a lot going on. But see, God is right in the middle of it. And he wants us to come together corporately to be encouraged and uplifted. Amen? And it says, uh, including of the Lord's, and to pray, it says, and the, to take on the Lord's Supper and to pray. So we see there's four things there for us as the church. We see that we devote ourselves to the teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the word of God. We see that we come together for fellowship and for the breaking of bread and for prayer. So, see, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of churches nowadays that does not want us to come together to pray. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that true, Pastor? Well, church, is it true? Yeah, it's true. Uh, you know, and there, there's a lot of things that the church, unfortunately, has taken out. I mean, we can just take this scripture right here, you know, and they've just taken out, taken out, taken out where there's nothing left but a reading, maybe a song, and then you're out the door. There's, there's, not, there's no allowing the flow of the word. There's no allowing of a corporate anointing or corporate prayer or corporate healings. There's just no room for that anymore. But here at Living Grace Church, we're going to do that. Amen. Amen. Um, and in Matthew 18, 20, it says, where, where there's two or three gathered, there I will be in the very midst of you. Amen? Amen. All right, now if you would turn with me to Hebrews. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, 19. And so as I was studying, I thought, Lord, you know, this is just really awesome. I remember when, you know, as a little girl, um, you know, my parents, we went to church all the time. You know, um, Steve and I talked. He was a little Baptist boy. I was a little Pentecostal girl. And, uh, but it didn't matter because um, we were just in the church all the time. You know, if you had prayer meeting, you were there every night. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of that going on anymore either. You know, there's, uh, there's just a lot of things that have been taken from the church, and it's been slow, but it's been steady. Can you see where the enemy is trying to pull everything back away from you one thing at the time? So I'm going to start in 19 because this is talking about, and again, I'm in Hebrews 10, 19. <clears throat> and this is talking about a new and a living way because you as the new born again believer need to remember you need to look at things a little differently than the world does. Amen. It says, therefore, brethren, since we have the confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he inaugurated for us through the veil. That was his flesh. That was the veil torn from the top to the bottom. And since we have a great priest over the house of God. See, we have a great priest now, which is over the church. Because Jesus said to Peter, upon this revelation, I will build my church. And then in verse 22, he says, Now, let us draw near with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, 
having our hearts sprinkled clean from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Number 20, uh, verse 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is what? Faithful. So we see, we were just singing this morning about the faithfulness of God. All of our life, he has been faithful. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of things we've went through, but we can honestly say that God was faithful. Amen? Amen. Amen. And 24, it says, now let us consider how. Now here, Paul was talking to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. He says, I want you to know how you need to come together. He says, let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and to good deeds. Now, now the next verse is going to tell us how to do that. Not forsaking ourselves assembling together, as is the habit of some, but, but encourage one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. So we see that in our life as being a believer, being a called out one, coming to the revelation of what Jesus has done for us, we see that Paul is showing us through the power of the Holy Spirit that we need to learn to come together and not forsake our assembly. Church, do you know that 64% after COVID, 64% of the church across America has not went back to church? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 64%. And you can look around you and see that there's some of the people that you know are not here. And, you know, you t I, I, I talked to some of them, not a lot of them, but I've talked to some of them, and we're, I'm just too afraid. I, I just, I, I, you know, there's just too much unsteadiness. And now we have even another, uh, you know, we're getting, how do I say this, Lord? Um, you know, le leadership of this country is trying to make us make a decision that their decision is correct and that, wow, it's just going to be even worse than it was the, at the first time. And so, um, you know, <laughs> I just, you know, I just said to the Lord, I said, well, Lord, I'm just going to stand with you. And he said, Pat, it's, it's something that the church has got to learn to do on their own. See, this is not something God is going to make a decision for you. Church, he loves you, and he's given you power and authority to overcome whatever it is you need to overcome. Amen. And so God wants you to join his church and to stay there and stay strong. How do we know the church will even last? Amen. We can go all the way to the end of the book, right? In the book of Revelation, the church is still there. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> you know, it's just awesome because I sit there and I thought, well, Lord, you know, because I'm telling you, you know, some churches are saying, uh, you know, we may not even be here. We may be this and we may be that. And I thought, well, you know, here at Living Grace Church, we're going to be here. <laughs> we are going to be here. Hallelujah. Because we are going to stand to do what God has said. And why do we go to church? Because God tells us to. He says, do not forsake yourself the assembly. So it's not something, you know, I'm not talking to people who have not been here for a few weeks. I'm not, don't get in their condemnation. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in general sense. And then one of the things I want to let you guys know is a lot of people think that, you know, coming to church once a month or once every other month is, you know, their duty. But here, you know, in Scripture, it tells us that they got together. The new church came together every day. And then Paul talks about he, he came weekly into the assembly. And so, you know, don't allow your culture, church, don't allow the worldly culture to dominate what you're supposed to do versus what the Word of God tells you to do. Why? Because the Word of God is always going to give you the strength and the power. Why? To do what you need to do. To, know, to do what God's wanting you to do co to continue His church. Don't give up, church. Don't give up. All right. All right, let's turn to Ephesians. 
You guys still here? Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Ephesians 4. Uh, 14, and I'm going to read through 16. And, you know, God's word instructs us as a church to be involved with each other, to be involved in the church, to be involved with his word. In other words, we can't just read the word and not be a doer. We have to be a reader of the word and a doer of the word. Amen? Amen. And so why? So these scriptures are going to tell us why. It says, it says, as a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by every trickery of men, and by craftiness and deceitful scheming. So that right there, I asked the Lord, I said, you know, Lord, with what's going on, he said, Pat, you know, the world is very, very happy to come up with. It's on waves. Have we seen a wave? In 2020, have we seen new doctrine come up? Oh, yes, we have. You know, and there's been religious doctrine come up, and then there's been worldly doctrine that's come up. I mean, and so it's trying to move you. And so the scripture is telling us one of the reasons we want to be involved in the church is so that we can hear the truth of the word, and we can come together and strengthen and encourage one another. And what the Lord was showing me is that, Pat, you know, you, what the world told you to do was just the opposite of what I told you to do. I tell you not to forsake yourself from the assembly. And they said, no, forsake yourself from the assembly. I mean, for goodness sakes, some of the things I wrote down just from memory was forsake yourself from coming together for worship. And then at one point they said, well, you know, you can't even come together because if you sing, you may spit on somebody. And I thought, dear God, you know, and I, I just, you know, sometimes I truly just stand there going, I, you know, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. I'm just sorry for these crazy people, you know, um, you know, because I, I you know, and I just, I just started thinking, I, you know, I think of Jesus because Jesus is our high priest. Amen. And so I'm just going to go through these scriptures here. And in Acts 5, 27 through 29, you know, Peter stands and, and they had just told them, they said, look, you just got out of prison and I just turned you loose and I told you, do not go back out there and be preaching in the name of, in this name. They wouldn't even mention his name. Don't, don't be preaching in this name. If I was Peter, I said, I'm sorry, you're talking about the name of Jesus? And then what did Peter say? He said, if it's God or man, we're going to obey God every time. Be, and the Amplified says, because we have no other choice. See, they made a choice. And their choice is, is no matter what now, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to live. This is our new way of living. And in Psalms 27, uh, it says, Then I will hold my head up high above my enemies who surrounded me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising to the Lord with music. In Psalms 139, 7, it says, We say, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us worship before his throne. See, people have needs. We all have needs. We all need the church, the body. We need one another. Church, never think that you're not important. Because God calls you important. He calls you righteous. He calls you holy. And he needs you. It was his choice to work through you. <clears throat> you know, when Jesus was going up into heaven, I, I think he was already praying in the Holy Ghost because he knew he was leaving the church to the disciples. That's us now, church. And Jesus is on the right-hand throne of God praying and interceding exactly for what you need. Glory to God. He's a good God. Amen? Amen. All right. And then I just think, you know, about the woman that had the issue of blood and how she decided, you know, she decided, you know what, um, I know I'm not to come out. She was breaking every law that there was. She could have been condemned right there and stoned right where she was. But she says, I am going to go to the house of the Lord. She chose to go to Jesus, hallelujah. And she touched 
the hem of the garment and was healed. Why? Because nobody else could help her. And you've got someone that can help you. You've got someone that can help you. Amen. Jesus can help you. And it doesn't matter what it is. Hallelujah. And then we see in Luke 17, it talks about the lepers, the ten lepers. And they stood back from a distance and they said to Jesus, Jesus, please have mercy upon us. You've got ten lepers that can't even come into where Jesus was. And Jesus said, come. See, we as the church need to say, come. You know, when, when we're out and about, we need to let people say, look, just come to Jesus. Just come to Jesus. You know, whatever it is that you need, just come to Jesus because he has your answers. And then it says that the lepers, they were healed as they went. Glory to God. Glory to God. The, the Lord, some of you guys with healing, you need to just keep standing because they were healed as they went. Amen. They were healed as they went. Yes, and amen. In James 5.16, it says, Confess your sins one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man worketh great. You know, I, as I stood there and as I was thinking about, um, I was just, just stay, I was walking and praying in the Spirit, just talking to the Lord about it. And, and he, took, he reminded me of David and Goliath and, uh, in 1 Samuel 17. And, you know, Goliath was someone that was coming against the church. You know, because he says to David, he says, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. See, there is voices now that defies the very power of God. They defy the very, the very existence of God. They don't even want to hear God's name. So they're the Goliaths. You know, they're the big, the strong, the mighty. Only in their eyes. <laughs> you know, you got little, little people like us, right? We got the word of God. Hallelujah. We got the word of God. And the word of God, all it takes is one tiny stone. Sling it right there. Just, just sling it right over to the enemy. Glory to God. And so, you know, as I read through this, I thought, you know, there's somebody talking. The enemy's talking when he should not be talking. You know, he, I mean, and he did this for 40 days. And no one spoke up. Well, you know, in Noah's time, Noah preached for 120 years. No one repented. So, you know, if you're talking to people and they take a hard heart, it's okay. Like the Word of God came to us this morning. If you're preaching, if you're sharing, if you're te whatever it is you're doing, and you give the Word of God and they don't receive it, that's upon them, church. That's not on you. See, God is wanting the people to hear the truth. He's wanting people to understand. There's a lot of us around. Amen? But if we don't ever open our mouth, how will, how will the world ever know? So the Lord is saying, you know, go up against the Goliaths because they're nothing compared to me. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, and as you go on down there in Isaiah uh, 17, 45, it says, Then David said to the Philistines, he says, You come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I have come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have taunted this day. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and remove your head from you. And I will give the dead bodies of this army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. There is a God in America. Hallelujah. There is a God in America, and we're going to declare and decree it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! I'm telling the church. Mm. One of the things I saw here was now the right person is speaking. See, when you start to speak the right things, you're going to start to see things maneuver out of your way. Because the enemy cannot stand. 
Look how big Goliath looked in the natural. I mean, we got a platform here and he's still big, right? And most of us would not even be, you know, he well, we know what he was. He was he was evil. There's a lot into that. But, you know, there, there's just things that we look at in the natural. And we think, there's just no way that I can overcome that. No, you're right. <laughs> you can't. But you have God Almighty on your side. And you've got the promises of God on your side. And so while you're coming together and encouraging one another, the Lord is telling you, look, church, you need to power up, right? We're here to take our batteries, plug it in, and recharge. Amen? And then we're going to go out. We're going to go out in the strength of the Lord. And then when you come in, you come in, you refuel, and we go back out in the strength of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Now, you know, there's... <laughs> I love the Lord. You know, I'm not... Um, We've had the Olympics, you know, you know, that's been on. And um, Fox News said that, um, I want to make sure I get this right, said that the ratings were down 44% from uh, 2016 and 56% from uh, 2012, the London Games. And, um, you know, I just thought, <laughs> glory to God. That's what I thought. <laughs> Why? Well, because you have male gender trying into uh, a female sports arena, and then you're winning that because you're a male in a female sports. And you know what? The church is speaking up. Hallelujah. They're like, click. Don't watch it. Don't hear it. Don't support it. And, and, and what is so amazing is that even people that don't call themselves Christian are looking at this and saying, you know, mothers of little girls that have spent years working and striving to be good at what they're doing. And they're saying, you know, this is just not right. This is just not right. This is what you hear, and I heard a few of the interviews in the, out of their mouth is, this is not right. And so it's like, wow. You know, the enemy thinks they're a Goliath. But see, the church has been praying. We've been praying, right, church? Don't give up on your praying for America. No, 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 we don't do that. And so we're starting to see breakthroughs. You know, the word that came uh, from the Lord uh, the other day, uh, last Sunday, when the Lord said, you know, if you could, if you could see when I pull back the curtain, if you could see what I am doing, you would rejoice and dance in these very aisles, you know, because God is on our side. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory to God. And so I just, you know, but, and, and then there's things that we need to get involved in that I'm seeing that I just want to encourage some of you guys. Well, no, all of you guys, you know, to get involved in your local, in your state, in your county. Get on boards, the school boards, all, all of these different areas that you could get involved in. Why? Because God will have a spiritual voice then. There's a lot for us to do, church, if we would just open our eyes. You know, there's a lot that we can go and be plugged into for the Lord. You know, when you've got... Um, a transvestite that chooses to come into a three to five year old um, little area into the schools, the local schools, and teach children how they can become a girl or a boy. It's time for us to start stepping in, church. It's way past time. Amen. Amen. It's just way past time. So, you know, for a lot of you that are retired, I just want to encourage you, you know, go put your gifting to a good call. You know, choose to listen to what's going on. Get connected with your local people and just really, just really pray and ask the Lord, where can I get plugged in, Lord? There's a lot going on. I mean, if you've got grandchildren, great grand, I got grandchildren and great grandchildren. I mean, Steve and I just celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary. Hallelujah. Ooh, yeah. 
I still am only 39. I am not changing that. I told Susan, no, you have to get your own number, Susan. But, you know, the Lord really wants us to really get plugged in. You know, don't think that because you're older, you can't. I just can't. I can't. I can't. No. Oh, my goodness. Give that up and go with God. Amen. You know, there's, and it may be something that you can do on the weekends. It could be something. But get plugged in or find out how you can support something like that. Amen. Amen. So, I, you know, when I, I just thought the church really did reject what was going on this year. And I just thought, well, glory to God. And, and hopefully the church, you know, we will, keep, we will keep praying because we know that God is needing for us to do exactly that. Amen. And so now um, in Hebrews 10.25, again, I'm going to close with this. It's just reinating here that do not forsake yourselves the assembly together as of the habit of some. See, even in the first church, once they got up and started going, what, Paul, what, what was written here, Paul was saying, look, it's already happening. Some of you are just, you know, because as a culture, it's just like Peter and John, when they couldn't figure out where Jesus was, they went back to what they were originally doing. Peter gets up and he goes, I'm just going to go fishing. And all the rest of them said, well, I'm coming too. Because they didn't know what to go do. And so, you know, here the scripture is telling us, look, don't forsake yourselves, the assembly. The assembly, we need to come together. We need to gather together. Gathering and assembling is two different things. Gathering is what you do, church. You gather people. You bring them in. And then when we come together, we have an assembly. Amen? And so the church, the Lord is wanting us to make sure that we do not grow weary in doing good. The Lord wants to make sure that the church is not going to grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Amen? Amen.